Okay, good evening. Today I'll be introducing our full length, first full length book that we'll be reading is called The Glass Castle. This is a 2005 memoir by Jeanette Walls. Uh, she published this book in 2005 and it has remained on the New York Times bestseller list for over eight years as of 2018. It is a memoir about Jeanette's life uh, with her unconventional some call it dysfunctional family, free-spirited family, but very loving family. Uh, she basically writes this memoir uh, covering her early life as a young child uh, with her parent Rex Walls, uh, her mom Rosemary Walls, her older sister Lori Walls, uh, her younger brother Brian Walls, and her youngest sister Maureen Walls in their adventures uh, as they go through, live and, and, and travel through California, Nevada, Phoenix, Arizona, West Virginia, and finally to her adulthood in New York City. So, uh, basically, uh, the reason why I chose The Glass Castle as a reading is because it really connects well. Uh, this family is what some call dysfunctional or, or, or very free-spirited, but they're actually a very loving family. And it contrasts with our first myth that we're going to be studying, the myth of the model American family where you have a stay-at-home mom, a professional dad who supports the family, and your basically perfect daughters, daughter or daughters, uh, your perfect son, fulfilling their, their gender roles uh, th throughout life, uh, and basically your dog in, in your white house. They actually li live comfortably in, in a white house. Uh, the, the Walls family is a lot different. Like they're, they're, they're often homeless. They, they travel around. Uh, they're very migratory. They're very free spirited, and you can kind of compare them to to, to the myth of the model American family, uh, and also maybe your family too, right? Uh, do, does your family fit the model American family? Does your family like Jeanette Walls's family, or maybe you have qualities of both? So that would be a really great contrast. Uh, our second myth we talk about is a myth of education and empowerment in the USA. The Walls family, uh, Rex especially, gives uh, her, her uh, sons and daughters a very unconventional education of uh, homeschooled education away from the tr uh, tr traditional school environment. And we can, we can actually see how the Walls children differ fr from the traditionally educated kids that they encounter throughout their life. So, we, so we'll see that. Uh, I also wanted to have you look at the relationship between the oldest daughter, uh, not the oldest daughter, but Jeanette, she's the second uh, the oldest daughter, with Rex, because Rex considers Jeanette her, her favorite daughter. Uh, how does their relationship evolve uh, over the book? So you, so you want to take a look at that. Also, uh, the relation of Re Rex, excuse me, Jeanette to her mother, Rosemary, who's really free-spirited, who really does, is not a stay-at-home mom. She doesn't really take care of the kids. Uh, how does that affect Rosemary's relationship with Jeanette and also the other kids? Also, Rosemary's relationship with Rex. It's a very free-spirited, uh, often abusive relationship. Uh, how do they two relate to each other? And contrast all these relationships to maybe your relationship with your parents, how your parents relate to each other and also your, your siblings, how you relate to your siblings too. Also, we're going to look at Jeanette's relationship to her siblings. Uh, they, have, they also have... They often had to take care of themselves. Jeanette, Lori, who is oldest daughter, Jeanette, and also Brian had to take care of themselves. And how do they relate to each other? Uh, since their parents, their parents were often very irresponsible, yet yet very loving. So we'll take a look at that. And we also have the uh, youngest daughter, Maureen. We, she's not heard too much in the book, but uh, what do you think about that? Do you have like an invisible uh, sibling who's not really uh, paid attention to uh, in your household there? That, that would be Maureen. So we'll also meet Maureen too. Uh, also, some other themes to look at as a book, uh, the Walls family do not live at home. They actually uh, are transitory, often living in trailer parks, their car, uh, running around, right? How does that unstable family, life, how does that affect them? Because it's not really the model family where they're actually not really uh, living in a house, right? What do you think about that? Uh, also, you know, your own living situation, too. How does your living situation compare uh, to, to, their, to their living situation? Finally, uh, rich versus poor, right? So a lot of, as they go through life, they encounter a lot of poor families, but those poor families consider the Walls family very poor, right? And, and they actually put down the Walls family a lot. So we'll also look at that too. Uh, and also how, what happens when a Walls family is not rich and how, how do people in society look, look, look at their, their family if they're not rich and they don't really conform to the rules of society. Rex, Rosemary, how they raise their kids, uh, how, how the father treats her, his kids and how the mother treats his kids. We'll also look at that too. Uh, also, the mom, she is not really taking care of the kids. 
uh, Rosemary. So we'll also look at Rosemary uh, relationship with her kids. And, and if, what about a free spirit of mom who doesn't really take their care of her kids, who's really irresponsible? Uh, is your mother like that? Or, or maybe your mother has some of the quality. So again, it will be a really great uh, way to compare uh, yourself to your family too. Uh, compare and contrast also. And uh, the, the book really looks at the father, Rex, the very controversial figure, Rex, who's very drunk, dishonest, but very loving of his kids. He actually teaches his, his kids a lot, maybe not, not to value material possessions, things like that. So what do you think about Rex? Uh, very uh, alcoholic. He, he has a dream to make a glass castle, which is like a sustainable house of various, for the kids. But, he, but does he ever reach his dream? To make that house, you know, he has a lot of promises for his kids, a lot of dreams, but it is his situation where he's going from job to job and being not really stable and not really stable mentally. Is, is that really affect him also? And also the parents' relationship with the kids as it evolves through time or, or how the family relates to each other over time. You, want to, you also want to take a look at that as you go through. So the book also attaches a lot of, attacks a lot of themes because it's basically showing how Jeanette grows up from the mid 60s all the way to the 70s and into the late 70s so very turbulent time in america and they encounter a lot of minority families uh, uh a lot of poor families in america a lot of rich families in america you want to take a look at that too because basically it's sort of like a microcosm of their of american life there too so the book is is really great it, it, it really connects to our myths and also allows you to compare and contrast to your own family the book uh there was actually a movie made of the book it was in 2017, starring Woody Harrelson. You know, he was basically the mentor in uh, The Hunger Games. Woody Harrelson was basically the father. Rex uh, Brie Larson, a, a very famous movie actor, was uh, played Jeanette. And also Naomi Watts, another famous movie actor, portrayed uh, Rosemary. That was a 2017 movie. It, it opened to mixed reviews. It didn't make too much money. Uh, but it, it was the book was so great that it actually inspired a movie, a major Hollywood movie to be made by that. And, and it's something to be uh, th uh, thoughtful of, uh, you know, comparing the movie uh, to the book. So, so we can also talk about that, too. So uh, you, right now you should be getting into the first 25 or so pages. Should be finishing up and then getting up to page about 50 uh, through the weekend. And you're basically taking a look at how Jeanette starts cooking hot dogs as a young kid on its own. So it gets, becomes very controversial and then it results in a hospital stay for Jeanette. And also you, a little a microscope, a little... Uh, a snapshot of the family as they're running, running away from uh, their, their uh, first home, the trailer park home, uh, where we first meet them. So it's it's actually uh, happens pretty early. And before that, there's actually kind of like a flash forward scene to New York, to uh, Jeanette's life in New York. We see her suddenly seeing her mom in New York when Jeanette is an adult. Jeanette sees her mom uh, basically scavenge, scavenging for food in a dumpster. Her mom is suddenly homeless in the future in New York. So basically think about that. Uh, it is an effective way to start the book where it actually starts in the future where Jeanette is actually uh, as an adult and then suddenly it just zooms back to the past and then we begin the long story as Jeanette relates her memoirs in a very long and leisurely way. But just take a look at the storyline right there in the very beginning because Jeanette kind of kind of uses uh, a little technique there to start in the future and then jumps back to, to her childhood past. Uh, so you should, we should be getting in the first 50 pages by about Tuesday um, the book is really is really great. Uh, I, I know you're going to enjoy reading about it and also talking critically about the book. Uh, we're going to be forming our first major groups for that. Uh, I'll be giving you the group assignment next week. What I'll be doing is asking you, uh, we're going to be breaking up into five groups of about five students each. Uh, I'll be asking you for you to uh, text me your preferences, uh, uh, which group you want to be in, because this is a major group project. And you'll also be doing your first essay, your first critical response essay that's coming up in the future where you'll be talking about the book, uh, talking about a subject of your choice that relates to uh, subject of, of the book that relates uh, to what you're interested in and also connecting the book uh, critically to uh, some of the first a few articles of Rereading America. So uh, just this weekend, uh, as we go through the weekend, just keep reading uh, as scheduled for The Glass Castle and then I'll be texting you uh, sending you a message about asking you for you for your preferences of what groups uh, do you want to be in. And then I'll give you your group assignment next week. And then as we go through the semester, we'll be getting critically into the book that way. Okay, so uh, for now, I'll, I'll see you and have a great Labor Day holiday. And you'll be hearing from me. Thanks. Bye.